On this particular day, I am actually getting prepared to go on a little trip. Me and my older three and the baby are going to be going to Colorado with my family. So my mom, my dad, two of my sisters, and then my other sister's husband is coming with some of her kids. We have been going to Colorado as a family every year since I was a little girl. I think I was eight the first year I went and we like to go in the winter time and go snow skiing. So obviously this year I will not be skiing because I am pregnant, but I am planning on letting my two older kids learn to ski. I am actually gonna be helping my um, sister that's right on me, the one that has the meat farm. She has a little girl who's about the same age as Jacob. And so I offered to watch her baby so her and her husband could ski, since I'm not skiing anyway. If she didn't mind um, kind of keeping an eye on my two kids and teaching them to ski and so, Anyway, on this particular day, I am making up some food to bring along. Since we have a group of 16 people going, my mom and my sisters and I sat down and we made up a whole menu plan for the week because going out to eat with 16 people, majority of those being children, isn't super fun or affordable and so it makes sense to make the food for the week. And so I'm gonna be bringing some French toast casseroles and also some lasagnas. And I decided to do all of my cooking before the trip because I do not really like cooking in other people's kitchens. It's just so hard to navigate someone else's kitchen. And also because my 18 month old is really hard to watch in houses that are not you know, childproof and I assume the condo we're staying in will not be childproof, so I'm not gonna have much time to be cooking. So anyway, I am whipping up some French toast casseroles this morning and you see I have one little small pan. My youngest sister has a dairy allergy and so I'm gonna be making hers separate with some almond milk so that she can still enjoy the French toast but it's dietary friendly for her. For this recipe, I'm using a couple of loaves of sourdough sandwich bread that I made, but you can use any bread. And then in my big bowl here, I'm mixing together six eggs, a cup and a half of whole milk, a half a cup of honey, and I'm going to put that over my pan. Now that's the recipe for one pan. Obviously, I doubled this, but um, for one nine by 13 pan, that's what you would use. And then I'm going to dot it with some butter and sprinkle some cinnamon and sugar on top. And then I did not bake these. I actually put these straight in the refrigerator. My parents are driving to Colorado and I'm actually going to be flying with my kids and some of my sisters and um, the other kids that are going and so I would not be able to bring all this on the plane but because they're driving I did give them all of my dishes before they left. Okay, so this clip is the following day and goes into the day after that because every project always turns in to be a bigger project than what you plan. I told my husband I want you to pull the dishwasher out because I never use it and I had a really good idea for this space and of course it turned into like a two, three day project. He started pulling it out one day then he realized there was like a certain tool he needed and then he needed some like caps to cap off where the water comes out to the dishwasher so things didn't leak. Long story short, we took the dishwasher out because I never use it and I thought, you know, instead of having this big ugly black box here, I could make this space much prettier and more useful for me. So I am cleaning this all out under here and I'm going to be storing my wheat, um, like my bulk wheat berries and my wheat mill under here before I had this in my basement and it's never fun to go downstairs when I need flour. So now that it's right here in my kitchen, it's so much more convenient 
print. And then I found these beautiful curtains here. I got them just right on Amazon. I am not a sewer. I'm not much of a DIYer. Um, you know, in that way I like to DIY my own like cleaners and soaps and things, but when it comes to sewing, it's not my thing. So I found on Amazon curtains that fit this space just perfectly, got a little tension rod and hung this up and I think it looks so cute. And now I don't have to go all the way downstairs when I need to grind my wheat berries. So anyway, I will link these curtains below if you have any desire to do the same thing, but you guys probably all think I'm crazy to take out my dishwasher because I know a lot of people comment a lot on me not using my dishwasher. I want to take a quick moment from this video to thank today's video sponsor, Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink with everything you need and nothing you don't. My family has been loving all the different Element flavors and during these colder months we're really enjoying our Element warm with the different chocolate flavors. They have several different chocolate flavors. Raspberry chocolate is my favorite for sure and I like to enjoy that with some warm steamed milk. It is super common to have electrolyte deficiencies and Element can help to replace those without all the bad junk because it's made with no fillers, no gluten, no artificial colors or sugar. Element may help you with your different electrolyte deficiencies that are causing headache, fatigue, and even muscle cramps. If you are ready to try out Element, you can use my link down in the description box below, or you can go to drinkelement.com slash our oily house. That's D-R-I-N-K lmnt.com slash our oily house and element is offering all of my viewers a free sample pack with any order and so that's a great way to try all the different element flavors or even to share element with a friend <laughs> The next little project that I am tackling is I wanted to do something a little different with my centerpiece here at the table after I took down all my Christmas things. I feel like it's been pretty boring. And I found this cute tan little floral vase at an antique store. So I picked up some dried florals and I'm making some little arrangements. One I'm going to be putting on the kitchen table. I also got a couple of other new things to put on my centerpiece here. And then I'm going to be putting the other one in my living room over by my rocking chair. I have a little end table, which so far I just have a lamp on and I've been wanting to add to that as well. So just doing a few little decor things this week before we leave on our trip. The candle that I'm adding is actually one that I made. I love making my own candles. It's actually so easy to do. If you have ever wanted to make candles, I do have recipes for those on my blog, OurOilyHouse.com. I could link that down below. They're super simple. I love the flicker of a candle on a cozy winter day. Another fun little project that I'm gonna be doing here in my kitchen is I want to add some different curtains above my sink and then add some little potted plants on my windowsill. So that windowsill above my sink is very narrow. So I've been collecting some little um, planters that would fit there. And so I'm just kind of splitting up this one larger plant into some smaller ones so I can set them on my windowsill. Right now on this 
day where I'm taking the curtains down. This is actually the day that we are leaving for our trip. Our flight was late in the afternoon and so we had a little bit of time to do things in the morning and I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to hang curtains on the day before I left because uh, it kind of got a little stressful. Like I thought I had more time than I did and all of a sudden I realized what time it was. I wanted to feed the kids lunch before we left. <laughs> but regardless, the job got done. I really love the way that these turned out and I actually have a link for these curtains as well. So I'll link all the things that I am using and adding here to my kitchen in the description box below for you. All right, folks, this clip here is going into the morning that we got home from our trip. I did not add any clips of our trip to this video, mainly because I was just very busy while we were there. I was watching my sister's little girl plus my baby, and so I felt as if I had twins most of the trip. It was so incredibly fun. I had so much fun watching her and hanging out with the little babies, but um, not much time to get very many clips. So no clips of the trip, but this is the day we got home and the night before this, or really I should say morning, we got home around 1 a.m. We had a couple hiccups at the airport with um, a car seat getting lost. My daughter's suitcase was lost. So it got really, really late. And so we had kids sleeping in until like 10 o'clock this day. Of course, the babies that did not go on the trip were up nice and early. And so it was a crazy morning of like, like just kind of getting breakfast as you woke up and now I'm just kind of resetting in the house. There's so many things that need to be done whenever the homemaker is away for a week. My husband does a wonderful job, you know, like keeping up with the house and everything, but there are just some things only the mom does. And so today is kind of a reset recharging day. I'm going to be very busy in my kitchen. Um, we had a lot of milk that was getting ready to go bad whenever I left. My husband and the two little boys had stayed home. Apparently didn't go through much milk. Normally we do about four gallons a week and this is just a couple days before we would be getting milk um, from the farm again and we still had several gallons in there and so I am turning that into yogurt. Anytime you have milk that's starting to taste a little sour, you can make yogurt with it and then, you know, it's supposed to say sour anyway. So it's a good way to kind of stretch your milk a little further and then we'll just be eating a lot of fruit smoothies this week to make sure that we don't waste any of our milk. So I'm getting some milk going and then I'm gonna be getting some bone broth going um, for a soup that I'm making today for lunch and also just to have some more broth in the fridge for later in the week. And then I'm also gonna be getting a loaf of bread going. nice to get a little bit of a break in the kitchen. So like I said, I had made all of the meals that I was responsible for making before going. And so when I was there, there wasn't any cooking that I had to do. My mom made a meal and both of my sisters made a meal. And so it covered every evening we had dinner on the table and I did not have to do any cooking, which was really nice, but I always look forward to getting back home and getting back in the kitchen and making nourishing from scratch meals for my family. At the beginning of almost every week, I like to make a loaf or two of bread, bone broth, yogurt, all of those types of things. It's not just, you know, on a day when I'm just getting home from vacation, but that's just what I like to do at the beginning of the week. Not even necessarily knowing what I'm gonna be using it for and what meal we're gonna be eating it with, but just having it ready. It's always, um, you know, it always gets used up whether we have sandwiches or eat it with eggs in the morning or even just turning it into French toast. And those are some of the things that I definitely miss most when I'm not in my own kitchen is my sourdough, all of my bones that are in the freezer, um, my cast iron skillets. It's, it's really hard to navigate 
in someone else's kitchen and I assume if the people whose condo we were renting there came to my kitchen, they would feel the exact same way. But it's just really funny how two kitchens can be so different yet work out so well for each individual person or family. After I got my bread started, I am feeding my sourdough starter. I like to feed that and put it on the counter. It has been sitting in the fridge while I'm gone and I actually used it straight out of the refrigerator to start my bread. Now I know that's like typically um, a no-no and not the way you're supposed to do it, but my bread will still rise and you know, doing this voiceover after my video, it rose just fine. It did take a little bit longer but I have a very established starter, and so I can do that and it still works just fine. But I am feeding it now and putting it on the counter just because it needs to be fed. And then I will be ready for whenever I'm ready to make my next sourdough, um, whatever, whatever I decide to make. So for lunch today, I'm just making a sausage vegetable soup. So I started off by browning up my meat and cutting up a couple of onions and sauteing those in, the, in my meat. And then once my meat's brown, I'm gonna be adding in some carrots and potatoes, can of tomatoes, and also some cream. Now typically I like to make my bone broth in my Instapot, but because my Instapot was in use with my yogurt, I'm just making it on a pot on the stove. So I just added my bones in, covered them with water, added in a bunch of spices and some bay leaves, and I brought it to a boil, then I'll just let it simmer. And I'll let it simmer until I have all of my other ingredients ready for my soup. I always save all of my vegetable scraps and I'll either save them to give them to my chickens or to put in the freezer and freeze and I'll add it into a bone broth um, just to give it more flavor and also more nutrition. Now while I'm working on my soup, every 30 minutes or so I'm going over to stretch and fold my bread. I'll do that three times and then I'll let it sit here and bulk ferment probably for about eight hours, and then I will shape it and bake it. So I'll get back to my bread tomorrow. I'm just getting it going today, but I'll actually be baking that tomorrow. I feel like no matter what ingredients you have, like here I am getting home from a trip, I haven't been home for a week and I still have everything I need to make a soup because you really can kind of, you know, make it up as you go, just adding in whatever root vegetables you have, frozen vegetables are fine, adding in cans of tomatoes and, um, you know, as long as you have some like bones in the freezer, a few veggies on hand and some meat, you can really make any type of soup. You know, if I had chicken, sausage, beef, it didn't really matter what meat I had, I knew I could make a soup with it. So, and it's just so easy to serve a soup. I find that it's the easiest thing, like with a bunch of kids, I don't have to cut up anything. I don't have to ask like, you know, do you want this on the side? Or there's no like condiments to go with it. It's just in one bowl, you get a scoop and it's ready to go. So I like to fall back on soup 
probably way more than my family would like me to, but <laughs> it's just so easy and just something that I can always do. And, and I personally love eating soup. You see me here putting my bones inside of a bag after they are finished with um, making my broth with them. I always put them in a double bag before I put them into the trash can. Um, one, because I feel like they're hot when I first pull them out and I don't want them to like melt through the bag and two, I don't want anything to get to them when we put them in the outside trash can. I like to keep those double bagged just to keep anything out of the trash can. Starting up a block of cheese to top the soup with and then when the soup is almost finished I added in a can of tomatoes and about a cup of cream. I love a creamy soup so after I am about done making any soup I must always add in a little bit of cream and then we like to top it with some cheese. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and getting to watch me do a couple of new little projects in my kitchen and also cooking and hearing about our trip to Colorado. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I get out a new video every single week.